Uh, thank you all for coming down. Um, so when Josh uh, uh, and I and Joanna first talked about uh, sharing this uh, case study, um, he explained that there were you know, really three things he was uh, looking to accomplish uh, in this summit. You know, one, really get into branded uh, content and branded storytelling. Uh, two, um, talking about fishing, where the fish are, which is obviously changing uh, a lot with different ways to target people and different platforms. Uh, and then a really big part of it, which we hope to really communicate today, is how this stuff actually gets done. Um, so there's a lot of talk about branded storytelling, a lot of talk about using different platforms, but just kind of the nitty gritty, like how, how do you actually push it forward in an organization? Um, so that's what we're here to do. Great, so why don't I start by setting a little bit of context. Uh, we had just launched our um, big program, Small Business Big Game, which hopefully some of you have heard of, but at the end of the day, we vetted over 15,000 small businesses and we gave one lucky winner, Goldie Blocks at the time, their very own national TV ad on the Super Bowl. So we were coming off of a really big win in the social world, uh, but our leadership had decided that we weren't going to invest in doing that program again a second year immediately following. And so we needed to come up, the agency, the, um, and into a QuickBooks team, with what we were gonna do next on social. We had over 15,000 small businesses that had engaged with us, and we didn't wanna just leave them hanging. We wanted to form this community. And so that was our challenge, along with, of course, shifting our perception from antiquated boxed accounting software to being a real small business advocate. We, we talked about the insight a little bit in the video. We knew that small business owners were online, they were seeking out inspiration, and that they wanted to learn from their peers. And so in terms of the concept, um, RPA presented several ideas, and the one that we wanted to go forward with was one where we actually followed the similar vein with the Super Bowl program that I referenced, where we give small business owners the mic, really put them in the spotlight, and focus on them. And that's what we did. Yeah, so uh, you know how the program worked? You saw the, uh, the video, um, it was really, shine the light on them, um, identifying the small businesses that were gonna be the most interesting, uh, the most relatable, uh, and uh, setting up uh, basically opportunities for them to tell their story and for other small businesses to learn from their uh, experience. And you know, that really came out of a really important insight. You know, the more that we uh, dug into the Small Business Big Game program, the Super Bowl uh, initiative, the more we realized that the small businesses really enjoyed learning from each other much more than from Intuit. And we can give them all those tips and tricks uh, in the world. Um, they're just gonna believe it more when it comes from one of their peers. And so we set out to create a year's worth of content, 365 days worth, uh, with six videos every single week. Uh, so what that meant was we needed to plan our road trip uh, we planned uh, 12 cities across the U.S. where we ended up interviewing over 52 small businesses to create that year's worth of content. Uh, just the nitty gritty around that, it was uh, generally a crew of three people, uh, a creative person that also um, uh, uh, was the director, uh, a, uh, um, someone that run the camera and someone that run the sound, and then we uh, have our in-house uh, production shop at RPA um, that did uh, all the work back, uh, back at the ranch, um, the editing, preparing it for, uh, uh, for the different social media platforms that we, uh, we published it. So why don't we go ahead and play this first video for you just to give you a taste of what that content is like. Having to make $30,000 fabric orders is absolutely terrifying, but when you buy in quantity, you get a better rate, and then we can pass that on to our clients. We have had some challenges, like we ordered a microfiber fabric from a different supplier, and you know, we got this stuff in, and it was not good. And we had to reject a whole batch of over a thousand ties. But we tried to, to make peace with what was a bad decision, and we learned our lesson of, you know, maybe we should have more things on hand. But we were able to take that thousand ties and distribute it to people doing transitional homelessness to work programs in the city of Detroit. We like to think that we've taken what was a really unfortunate business mistake for us and at least do something good. Great, so that just gives you a taste of it. Um, now imagine as we get into this next, um, next piece of it, it's across the platforms you would expect, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. 
um, and really scrappy from a production perspective, really making the most of that content, um, filming one small business but getting a week's worth of content out of it. So a really big part of that was um, uh, really working out a plan for distribution uh, and also content framing. Um, so we had a lot of video content, we had still content, uh, and uh, you know, a, a, a big piece is on the different platforms, Facebook video, uh, Facebook video ads, uh, Facebook carousel ads, um, uh, all the different opportunities there, different types of sequencing of those, uh, of those ads, and then also looking into um, uh, different YouTube ad formats, Twitter ad formats, and figuring out the right uh, match uh, to actually optimize engagement off of it. Um, so starting with those core assets and then versioning them uh, for the right environment. You know, there are a ton of learnings that came out of this. You know, the, the kind of foundational layer was, hey, let's put this content out there. Let's make sure we adapt to uh, what works best on each of the platforms. And after a while, you realize, OK, so uh, if we dig in and we, um, let's say, say, hey, you know, we, what if we try to drive up uh, engagement rate or view rate a little bit higher? Where are the, some of the different levers that we can pull, uh, either from a targeting standpoint or for a video format standpoint? Um, so a big part was that, uh, that foundational layer. And then each um, basically week, uh, it's introducing different hypotheses for testing and tuning to optimize engagement. Yeah, that was what was great about starting off with a program where you knew you were going to do a year's worth of content because you could just continually test and learn the entire way through. Topics-wise as well, we were open. So this was not about putting into a QuickBooks into the mouths of small business owners. We tried to ask them questions, right, from that perspective. We wanted to get some input about, around QuickBooks. But what we learned was that small businesses wanted to talk about their passions. They wanted to talk about their day-to-day. -day. They wanted to talk about how they hired, how they fired, how they stayed motivated. And so we just went with that. We sat down, like I said, for hour-long interviews and then created the content for them by them. So what we hadn't changed a whole lot was the format for that what we posted each week. We started off by introducing the small business, dove into the daily video content, and then the hypothesis that we had was we wanted to have them ask a question of their peers. And so that's what we did up with our final post to really get that two-way conversation going. We wanted to form a community, and a community can't be one-sided. It can't all be the small business owner talking to their peers. They need the chance to react and ask questions as well. Unfortunately, all the testing and learning we've done, this has stayed true throughout the entire time we've been with the program. So I think a key piece to this program, and I think for a lot of our content, is it's all around integration. If you have content that you produce like this and you leave it in a silo, it doesn't get, it doesn't really get the chance to breathe like it could. And so from an integration perspective, that was really key to us. After we had launched this particular program, we also formed our own community. So today we have a community of small business owners, 125,000 strong, on the ONIT network. And so we wanted to make sure that what we were doing on our social media platforms also integrated into the community. The other piece that was really important is we knew we had just launched our first conference, QuickBooks Connect, where we brought small business owners, accountants, developers together to really connect with one another, get inspired, learn some things. And this particular program, we figured out what cities we were going to go to based on what cities we thought QuickBooks Connect was going to be in. And so that set the stage for us to support another of our, our team members. And then also, we had a lot of paid, paid media out there, clearly. So when you go to a city to hold a conference, you've prepped them in terms of the paid media, primed them with QuickBooks, um, which obviously makes it a little bit more efficient on your advertising from your advertising. And then we got them on stage. Bill Rancic sits down, interviews local small business owners that we'd featured in our program. Yeah, I'll just say the, uh, the local aspect, we, I think that was a really important learning. Um, you know, we went out, we figured, um, hey, you know, we could focus on some different business categories that would be interesting to people. Um, what we actually found um, was that, um, that the local nature, how geographically relevant a business was, um, that had a high, much higher relationship of whether people were going to be engaged. Um, and then I guess something that maybe should have been intuitive, but we learned over time, um, just the personalities. Uh, you, know, you can get a, an interesting business that gets, uh, get, that gets recommended, but ultimately it's that person that's, in, uh, that's on screen or, or, or on camera um, that, uh, that ends up being a big driver on, on, uh, on whether people are going to engage with it. So the other fun integration that we had um, that at least was rewarding from the social media side of it was our advertising team actually took a cue from the success that we were seeing with this program 
and they reformatted the way that we did our advertising. So they created digital videos with the exact same format. They just found customers who could talk about our product in the way that we wanted to and then filmed them. And not only did we put it um, online channels, but it's also airing on offland channels, which I think is just a testament to the program itself and the insight and the nuggets that we uncovered. Um, and then the integration piece that is so, so important and critical. I mean, it was almost a casting experiment, um, just going around the country and meeting these uh, different small business owners. Um, you know, most casting environments are pretty forced uh, and not, uh, not exactly perfect. Uh, and this just kind of happened organically. Thanks to the vetting on the agency <laughs> side. So then, um, from the Intuit perspective, we'd captured a year's worth of content on a pretty scrappy budget and we were trying to figure out what to do next with the program. It, wasn't, it was still driving high engagement, but we didn't necessarily know from a budget perspective if we could go out and film new businesses. And so what we did in partnership with the agency was we figured out a way to repackage that content. So instead of focusing a single week's worth of content on a business, we then repackaged it into weekly themes and drove, oh, about another 20 weeks of content out of the original 52 weeks. Um. You know, I think uh, uh, that's kind of an interesting thing to get into. Uh, you know, on the agency side, we had a lot of people with ideas. Hey, we want to try this out, or you know, what if we did things this way? Um, there's probably, uh, especially on the creative side, more interest in trying new things and creating more content, uh, and just the discipline, uh, you know, that we kind of learned together on, hey, let's make sure that we make the most of the things that we already have. In some cases, that's repackaging, um, you know, instead of going out and creating new content. You know, I, uh, I think this is done on a really efficient budget uh, altogether, but, you know, still, when you can t uh, get more value out of things you already have, um, you know, I think that's, uh, that's a really important thing to prioritize over going out and getting new assets. And it helps with the senior leadership sell-in, too, right? I mean, the program was approved the first year, as we mentioned, because we had the, this active audience that we wanted to stay engaged. But how do you keep going with the, same, with the same budget? And this is one way to do it. And senior leadership loves that, right? Anytime you can stretch your dollars even further and still drive good ROI and good content. And there is a certain amount of creativity. You know, when the, uh, the teams are forced to go back and say, OK, no more budget. How, how would you repackage this? How would you represent this? Um, and so you know, people like being challenged. They'll figure it out. Right. So just some summary that um, we wanted to share from the first year of the program. I think you saw a lot of this in the video, but we had fantastic engagement. We had great ROI. We had great sentiment. I think to the conversation earlier around ROI, one of the things that QuickBooks has done is we have a marketing mix modeling agency that we use for all of our marketing activities. So even though we didn't set out for this program to drive ROI and to drive sales, believe me, it's a number that I've um, shouted out across the organization many, many times. Uh, which, which is fantastic, and we wouldn't have been able to get that had we not used a marketing mix modeling. The number was in the video, right? It was, it was. It was in the video. <laughs> Can I just say it? Yes, our, our, uh, you know, I, I, I think uh, you know, one of the coolest things uh, you know, from our standpoint is having our creative teams, our production teams, and our me media teams all come together and, and truly believe that the best thing about this program is it turned a $5.51 ROI. Um, so for every dollar it was spent in this program, it returned five and a half dollars back. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think any of our team members want to go out and just create content to make it cool and, and have it uh, win awards. Um, you know, we get hired to drive business. And I think that was, uh, uh, it was great to get everyone aligned on, hey, you know, we can develop really engaging content, find just the right audience, and have it drive business without forcing selly, selly, selly uh, messages into it. There were no buy now buttons in those videos, if you noticed. It was just a simple, from our Intuit QuickBooks handle, and Intuit QuickBooks presents. So. Not on those ads, but they were yeah. retargeted later on. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then I think the, uh, we had a great program, and it had been in market for over a year and a half, and the organization was pushing us are you still going to do this? Is it the right thing? And we said, absolutely. We, we knew that it was the right program. It was generating the right results. And so we went out, and we conducted more interviews in more cities. Um, right now, we've gotten it to two years of content, which we're super, super proud of and super pleased with. But what we also did was we adjusted to the changing marketplace. So Facebook, the new video ad, the mobile format that came out, the new videos that we went out and shot were in that mobile format. And so it gave us more space, takes up more of your screen, whether you're watching um, on mobile, like most of our target audience, uh, or desktop, but still drive, drives that value. And then simultaneously, we launched onto Instagram. That was a platform we hadn't been on. 
And we're testing into that. We're seeing how video performs. We know that it um, gets a little bit higher boost in the algorithm, so it saves us a little on the paid media side of things. Uh, but I think, I think the, the nugget here is to just continue to experiment with what you have um, and launch into new platforms and test and learn, see what works. You know, I, I think uh, you know, one of our big goals from an agency standpoint was to make this as frictionless as possible for Joanna and her team. Um, you know, when we need to do something for a vertical video format, well, that, the insight comes from the media team, it gets brought over to the creative team, who shares with the product, production team, and then things get done that way. Um, Joanna should never hear <laughs> about the, you know, the, um, you know, everything that's happening in the back end. Hey, this is really optimizing, uh, or we're optimizing for mobile formats, um, or hey, you know, we're going to you know, be increasing our spend on Facebook, and you know, we need to figure out different ways of getting people to enable sound. Um, and just having all that done on the back end. We should never have that conversation with Joanna. It should just happen you know, for her. We should be talking about um, strategic issues, uh, which has been great. You know, I, I think so much of uh, the hypothesis testing came from Joanna and her team, um, and we would share insights, and we would have a, just a great strategic discussion on what we do with those insights and how to put them in motion. Which I think takes us nicely um, into our close. We're gonna rebrand this program with Ways to Grow. So we can, again, integrate with a larger campaign uh, that the company's running right now to focus on new businesses. And then we'll test into a little bit more of product demos. I think after two years of seeing responsive small business owners, we have, um, we have permission to do that. So um, to wrap, I think a few key themes that have made this program successful. Um, the first, I think, should be hopefully pretty obvious, is it's not about QuickBooks. It's about our target consumer. When we focus on them, we see, we see good results. I think we talked about being grounded in insights. If you don't have the right insight, it's not going to launch the way that you want it to. It's not going to um, have that impact. I think you know, for us, the insights um, you know, definitely meant from a platform standpoint, um, from a format standpoint, from a targeting standpoint. You know, little things that we figured out, like you know, geography is the most important thing to drive uh, engagement rates. How do we, how do we uh, adjust the plan based on that, um, on that insight? Mm -hmm. Which covers testing and learning. Yeah, you know, just one thing about testing learning, um, you know, there's a risk in optimization to be very reductive um, and just keep doing only the things that work. Um, you know, we definitely approach uh, the optimization process together as a, 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 a lot of um, hypotheses, new hypotheses we want to introduce. What if we did th uh, things differently creatively? Uh, what if we cut things a little bit differently? Um, so, you know, really testing learning isn't just about optim optimizing down for efficiency. It's also uh, uh, taking insights and optimizing out uh, and learning more. Mm -hmm. And then integration. I think um, on the QuickBooks side, there's nothing worse than having silos among all your channels. And so as much as we can take it on ourselves and the, on the social team to integrate our content into other channels, it's only going to help us help our customers and help our business. And just the partnerships. I mean, I think um, you know this. This has been such an awesome program, and small business, big game as well. You know, it really felt like one team uh, going along along the way. Um, yeah, it was fantastic. That's it. So, all right. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm.